Welcome to the channel. Here's another camera from my collection. Uh, it's a four times five inches film sized press camera from United States. Uh, it's made by Berke and James Incorporated from Chicago, US. Let's look at it first from outside. Uh, it's all metal, very sturdy, a bit worn out. This is one of the cameras I got when I was living in the US and I just shipped it to when I moved to Finland here and haven't really looked at it much since. Haven't cleaned up, haven't repaired it. And at some point when I, I will have again a workshop of my own, I will start repairing and restoring more of, more of these cameras and make more detailed videos and stuff for you to look at about that topic. As well as my radios and other things I'm, I would normally be repairing if I had a place to do that currently. Anyway, back to the story topic. Here's a rangefinder by Colart, a synchronized rangefinder. Uh, something seems to be missing from here. There's a hole. Uh, this was called a focus spot. So it was basically a lamp that gave you assistance in focusing in bad lighting conditions. I believe I have maybe one of these somewhere in my boxes. I could install one here. I think this is the holder to it somehow. Maybe a bit bent. Uh, this is a viewfinder, um, I guess these are focusing rails here, you can see B, B at J, Burke at James logo. Uh, now this is quite dirty, it, it's, it's old and hasn't been looked after for a long time. Handle, surprisingly good condition, I think I might be able to restore this just fine. Kind of a nice nerd knob there with the lines. Um, wonder what material that is. Uh, not all parts are like leather in the front, but here the side of leather, they have made this part, which is just crackle, crackle painted metal. Looks really nice. On top, um, I guess this is the opening of the front door. I hear it says Watson. Uh, I wrote online funny stories about this company making use of this Watson name. It's on another collector's website, so I will put links to his page in the descriptions. Yeah, this definitely needs a cleanup. Though it looks kind of dull and this kind of, but very often it's just appearance and I've managed to make it very shiny, like a mirror again. So, but it's important not to damage it now while it's in this state. I mean, this was very popular in press photographer, uh, especially in US, this type of cameras. Um, what else it says here? Here's the, uh, rangefinder and the view where you look into the rangefinder uh, here's a bar so to those who don't know what is a rangefinder basically you have two lenses here and you look an image it's just some mirrors and prisms there and or depending on how it was made basically you see two images slightly like separate from each other but when you adjust the focus they start going on top of each other images and once the images are on top of each other so that the single one image, you know that your focus is correct. So it sets the distance. You can use the same method to measure the distance as well. Yeah, back to this one. It says here, Hayland Research Corporation, Denver, Colorado, US. So um, this is a, afterwards, I mean, this was sold, you could buy this separately and attach to your camera. So many different cameras in Europe, US, were equipped with <laughs> these uh, colored synchronized rangefinders. Uh, then there's hey, this one, uh, Hayland. I have some products from Hayland, mainly flash lamp, flashlights. So I guess this was a quick attachment for flashlights. Interesting though is that I have many of them made by Hayland. So maybe I can actually find a matching one for this. Again, this seems quite dirty, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily worn out. It, it, it's just dirt on top. So it can be restored quite nice. Some stuff has been fixed by hand, quite typical. Uh, the back has, I can't tell, but it's the B at J again there. Bottom, this is funny. <laughs> yeah, not everyone uses this, but they have this full feet here so that you can put it comfortably. Uh, again, one screw has been changed. Uh, this one has more modern screws. This is interesting. Well, some other parts too. So uh, difficult to tell when exactly this was made. My guess could be... 40s, 50s, something like that. Um, I mean, people were still using this for other purposes. 
Yeah, maybe this bottom plate has been added later. Let's look at the back first. So, uh, okay, obviously. Oh, this one has it. This one I didn't know. This is a film pack adapter. So you could have a pack of films with, instead of a glass plate or a roll film or individual films, you could have a pack. which was really packed package of films, which was easy to sight. Oh, this is, oh, this is the dust on this one. This one is very old. I, I, I know when something hasn't been touched or cleaned for ex very, very long time. It has a very peculiar smell. There's some text written here. Can't tell though. Something, maybe honest name. Gra model to graphic. So it's a company made by Graflex Inc. in Rochester, New York, USA. Feedback adapter. So you could. I, I don't think there's anything inside. I hope not. Let's open this one. Let's put this one further. So, so this is what it looks like. Um, you could basically buy the film pack here. It was easier to like, uh, I actually, I've never used one, but if I understand from the, what I've read and nor have I actually seen one live, I believe at, it's not so long time ago, you could still buy some version of it or something. But basically it was like ready, ready packaged uh, films, which you could put here and expose those. Uh, yeah, that would be actually interesting to find one which is unused and see how they work with this. Let's look at this one. It's, uh, oh, it's, ah, it's on the springs. Let's see. This is actually exciting because I don't believe I have ever opened up this camera. It, it's a premiere for you and for me. Let's place it this way. Okay. Uh, ooh, do we have a, oh no, the glass has broken. So now you get to see the this is there's some metal i have no idea why that one is there yeah you see the glass has broken i don't know if it was when it was new like when i bought it there's some corrosion there can be cleaned looks actually pretty much okay this one has a better glass because it's got the grid edge down to it yeah the glass has broken i mean it could have either it was broken when i bought it that was a long time ago sometime during its lifetime of storage for more than half a century, or it's been broken during one of my moves across the Atlantic. But, ah, now I realize what this is. So if you want to make notes of your films, whatever you was taking or topic or instructions for your filming schedule, this is, I don't know if it was part of this, you could purchase as an option. It was originally added, but it's clips. You can put your paper here or something to use as instructions. This is actually interesting. Never seen this before. In many view, so-called view cameras, which are stationary, which are not meant for press use, which are meant for fast. I mean, press cameras are tended to use for fast moving things, action, things happening fast, you can handhold them and so on. Whereas view cameras often tend to be these kind of big cameras, which were stationary on tripod and they had more movements and features. This one, has a feature which is from a view camera and many others don't have it. Let's see, here it is. Here's a, a button or something. Press it down, voila. And you can change from horizontal to portrait mode and so on. You can turn the film. This is a really cool feature. Oh, uh, I can see that it's, it's a bit pitted not bad just needs some maintenance let's put this one back in place so you just filled it and slot it in place and then you remove this one and you're done you can go taking pictures uh, yep i think it's time to open this up push button yep here it goes okay wow i mean it obviously hasn't been cleaned for a very long time okay let's let's open it more up Oh, this is interesting because I really, oh yeah, I hope I didn't take it out of the rails. No, not so badly. Unfortunately, since I hadn't opened this before, 
Someone had managed to derail this from the rails, which is sitting on, so I had to put it back. But now it's now it's okay. So let's try again. It should slide. Uh, yep. It's obviously. Ooh. My bet is that you're probably the first ones for a long time to see this open because things are not opening very easily. Oh yeah, things are kind of stuck. I don't know if you can hear the crackling sound that's coming from the bellows. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a new unboxing for this camera. Oh yeah, let's slowly. There's a stopper to which it's supposed to go into. Not further than that. All right, now this one. Wow. Yeah, these bellows, I don't know, they, they've kind of gotten stuck to themselves. They appear to be very high quality bellows, but they, I don't know what's got, but something has gotten stuck. I need to flex them a bit. It is actually when I buy some really old cameras that's been in box or someone used for half a century or even more, you never know really what to expect. Okay, kind of okay. Interesting. Uh, okay, this one is supposed to be tightened. Doesn't really help much. I think I need to. This has been left in some sort of a weird attachment. I think it's supposed to be there. Is there a holder there? Aha, uh -huh. I understand what the problem is. You run into people, people have fiddled with cameras and they don't know what to do with them. So they have put some settings in the wrong way and they don't work. So obviously whoever opened this long time ago or put it together really didn't know what they was doing. Okay, now it's, Back together. Wow, that, that's 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 a. Uh, it's not clean. It's got a massive amount of dirt, but boy, it's it's. I didn't believe it would be, look this beautiful. Then it says BHA Press, Burkett James Inc., Chicago, U.S. It says patent pending, manufacturers or something like this. There's a Kodak Compur, which is actually this is an older lens. It's a Kodak, Kodak Anastigma, so. Uh, this is a better lens. It's a very big one. This probably had a, something to do with... There's probably a synchronizer here. It's a system you can attach to the shutter, uh, which you can connect then to the uh, flash gun or the flash uh, light of your camera. However, that's gone. Switches, buttons. Um, this is for always usually moving. This is... Yeah, this is the focusing thing. Uh, this is, you can lock, unlock. Now, yeah, now it moves easier. <laughs> Much faster to focus. And it's a friction based. Here's a frame finder. I don't know, since there was no viewfinder here, that other end. I don't know, honestly, where the rest of it is. It doesn't appear to be there. Oh, this is impressively well done. It's like a, I don't know what's this attachment for this. It's way overdone. Here's the bellows. These are in incredible condition. Yeah, you can see some of them are still sticking to each other. Oh, yeah. That's what probably caused the problem of opening it up. They're for some reason sticking to each other. But they're in extremely good condition. Wow, this is, I'm really happy about this. And you were the first to, to see this. I think I need to open up some of them more. Yeah, they kind of punched up. That's why the bellows are not straight. Stretch, which open it up. Um, these ones, this one, because like I said, this is more towards the direction of a view camera than a press camera. So here's another where you can adjust the height. You can adjust the tilts. So you have a lot more adjustment. Many of the press cameras, cameras which I had before, other than press cameras as well, had usually just like up down adjustments for the lens. And that's all. This one has the rotors in the back. With this one, you can lift this front, tilt it different ways. Uh, I guess shift sideways. Yeah, there's the shift button is there sideways. If I tilt it, open it up. 
uh, it slides there. Now it's actually centered as it's supposed to be when you so when you close many of these top cameras, you need to make sure everything is in correct place and centered before you push it back. Otherwise, it might cause some damage. As the last thing I realized, ah, oh, yeah, there's there's you can see the lever coming from the range finder here, which connects it to the optics here with this stick, which you can, it's attached to the this thing so that you can. Uh, that this one is moved and it moves the mirrors and lenses accordingly inside. This one uh, is the one which is kind of calibrated for the lens and the camera you have so that it does the correct type of movement and then the equivalent uh, measurement of meters is put here. Here's even two of them, one in feet and I'm not sure if the other one is in meters. I have no idea if the lens works. Oh, <laughs> that's a nice one. Well kept, very old Kompur and still works perfectly. I mean, it's a Kompur, it's the, there were different types of shutters uh, and this is the Kompur shutter. Uh, in this case, it was made by Kodak. There's some Pemco marking here, which is Pemco, I have no idea what it means. But as the last thing, one of the big differences with this one, because it had, it's a press camera, so it's for like carrying and shooting from hand and so on and taking with you use. It has a front shutter, like almost of those cameras, which are like this, the American, I would call it the American style press camera. I mean, there are some like this made even by some German companies like IHG, which made similar one, but I would call this the American style since many American manufacturers made cameras like resembling this one. The difference with this one and those though is that most of those that look like this had a shutter in the back. They had a focal plane shutter, like some many of the cameras which I've shown you uh, before. But this one doesn't have any. Instead, it has the rotating back. I think it's good because the shutter often uh, got uh, destroyed over time. It had problems and so on if the design wasn't good. So having this concept of just having the front shutter is actually much, much more robust now with the hindsight. Uh, ergonomically, maybe not so best because it's got a lot of sharp surfaces. Uh, visually beautiful. Okay, I need to clean it up, get it working, but definitely one that I can fix and get working for sure. It's inc incredibly well made, survive the time incredibly well. I mean, these pillows are just stuck. I don't know why, but they're beautiful. They're in so good condition. You can still feel they're soft. I'm not sure even what, is it like rubberized something or leather whatever but it's in extremely good condition if you want a camera or you wanted a camera which would serve as a combination of press camera meaning portable and so on but yet you would want to put it on a tripod and take photographs of it with a lot of choice of movements of lens and the film to get all kind of different stuff going on then i would this will be a, could be a good compromise camera for that purpose and yes you can still find these every now and then on eBay, for example. Final view of the Burke, beautiful Bork and James, James Press camera from uh, uh, Chicago, US. Please like, subscribe and all that stuff. And um, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.